Hello everybody, this is part two of the Old Henderson Real News Show, Organize, Don't Criticize. I'm very fortunate this time, folks, I have a guest with me. Uh, he is a man that knows something that I don't know, and he is focusing on God's people. His name is Dr. Purvis Williams. And I was very amazed in part one to find out that this man is a prophet and I'm, I'm also amazed that he believes what he believes, which is very good because sometimes when you talk to a person like me that like to deal with the current situation, we don't believe too much in the future unless something happens. And this man, which some of you all met in part one, is very special. He is a chosen person, is a prophet, and he doesn't even believe it. So that's why I want you all to stay tuned to the Old Henderson Real News Show, Organize, Don't Criticize. And we will get into part two and talk about uh, local political issues. We have to deal with the local situation in Mississippi and other areas. We're going to talk about one of the greatest men in the history of the world, and that's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his uh, adventure of uh, nonviolence and so forth. We also, in part two, will share a little bit of information about national and international affairs. And of course, we conclude uh, with a few statements about anything we want to talk about. That's where we do it on the old Henderson Real News Show. But we always come up with solutions to your problems. And that's what we will be sharing with you. So call someone again. Call them text them, do something. We want everyone to listen to the Eld Henderson Real News Show because you're not going to hear this information everywhere. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you all to be in the presence of Mr. Purvis Williams. He is a great doctor. And sir, I'm glad to have you with us this evening. And I am appreciative that you were able to leave what you were doing and stay with me for the second hour. Well, <clears throat> again, it's an honor to be here with you for the second um, hour of the show. Um, not a, considered myself no prophet or any anybody special. I'm kind of like nobody. I just happen to know a couple of things, and I try to share those with people. But as far as I'm just a regular dude, making a whole lot of mistakes, and beg God for forgiveness because that's just who I am. I have a idea for the future. Oh, so we'll call it a vision for the future. Um, and I'll say that that God did give this to me because personally, I was trying to run away <laughs> from any type of responsibility and uh, maintain my trucking business. So this was a uh, is unexpected. Well, that's why I want to tell you that you are a prophet because you act just like prophets. Uh, Jonah had the same <laughs> mind that you had. He didn't want to do what God told him to do. And there were many others that were going astray, just doing all kinds of things. And the Lord had appointed them and they were killing Christians, just doing whatever they wanted to do. And he finally touched them. Mm. And they changed their lives and the lives of thousands. And you will be doing the same thing after death now, your ideas will start taking hold in the world in 500 to 1,000 years. 500 to 1,000? That's right, because nobody's going to pay any attention to what you're talking about these <laughs> days. They're going to hear it and say it's a good idea, but they say due to the world situation, mm -hmm. which is <clears throat> very unhumane, that things are not going to be equitable anytime soon worldwide. See, I'm looking at the worldwide deal right. with emphasis on Mississippi, the South, and the United States. That's where things are going to have to be worked on first. And that's why we must talk about, again, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Martin Luther King and some of his activities. Now, I understand that you know a lot about his situation, well, but there's something that I've been dealing with in my life since I started reading about him and listening to him on radio when he was uh, alive in the uh, 
60s, early 60s. I had a mm -hmm. chance to hear him a lot. And at one time, he was talking about something that I didn't approve of at the time, and that was nonviolence. Oh, Those okay. black leaders, King, Dr. King, and a lot of his cohorts were talking mm -hmm. about nonviolence. They were beaten and harassed. Mm -hmm. All kinds of things was happening. Right, right. And I want to know from you, since you are God man, mm -hmm. whether nonviolence <clears throat> benefited black people in America and the world, or is it what I call a loss or gain? Mm -hmm. Which one? Benefit, loss, or gain? And you take this any way you want and let me know so I can probably change some of my ideas. Okay. I'll tell you what I think about it. I studied that approach, and, and, and I'm with you. I don't agree with it either. Um, I understand what he was doing, um, trying to have the nonviolent approach so that it would keep from causing more problems within the um, community. I get that. However, I'm the type of person who believes that if you slap me, I'm not turning another cheek. I'm slapping you back. You're going to stop hitting me. So when I say I am for nonviolence, I'm just for it in a different way than Dr. King was. And let me explain. So instead of us going out and trying to march or do a sit-in, or we're not getting out the front of, we're not getting out of the front of the bus we're going to get in the back what i say is all poor people not just not just black people not dark skinned not remember i don't like black not dark skinned brown <clears throat> not light skinned people all people who are being oppressed stop working together we get together and we decide that look this is wrong so this is this is the way I look at this. So we, the oppressed, are the ones who are at the bank. We, the oppressed, are the ones who are doing the repo. We, the oppressed, are the ones who are going and arresting people. We, the oppressed, are the ones that the rich people are using to oppress the oppressed. So why don't we wake up? And say, why are we hurting our brothers and sisters who we know don't have anything? Now, Mr. Williams, now I want you to think about what you're saying. I know you, what you're I talking said. about we. We. Brothers and sisters. What brothers and sisters God's did black children. people have doing that? You keep that trying period? to say black people, and that's the thing, though. See, I'm talking about God's children. I'm not talking about black people. You want to be racist. You want to be racial. Well, you want to call me. I don't want to be racial. I you want to call me a racist? Don't no. do that. I'm not a racist. I'm saying I believe, a racist I believe is not a bad thing so much. It's, it's, race, it's not, not racism. I'm not saying uh, that, that it's a bad thing to love your race. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I am not only focused on my race. I am focused on humanity as a whole, the human race. So what I've seen... Because I used to have the black medallions, the African medallions, and all that, and fist in the air. I used to be that guy, too. No, and I, then I never did I educated those myself. Kids. I didn't practice that. <clears throat> well, I educated myself because I was, a, I was one of those sheep following the bandwagon, too. I've, I've been in the bandwagon. I, I played the drums. But guess what? I woke up, started reading, started researching, and, and more, more so than anything, started seeking God's direction. What do you what do you want from me, God? And and, and I was reminded <clears throat> that when I was a young man, I thought that by the time I got to fifty, or sh I actually thought before then, that all this racism would be done, all the races would be dead, all the crazy stuff would be gone. Races live a long time. And I guarantee you they're going to be here when you are dead and gone. I'm hoping they won't be. Well, dead. I'm telling you they will. <clears throat> I think we can put that fight up now. And if we, God's children, actually get in the face of evil and they will flee. Mr. See, Williams, they don't I don't know where. See, who see, brainwashed but, you to believe Who brainwashed that? you to believe it don't work? Now, you know who told you well, it don't there's work? no such thing as people in the world, any what? group of people in the world, 
that's going to do anything for black people. I have see, not that's the seen thing. this. You're trying to get people to do something for black folks. I'm trying to get them to no, do I'm something not, for their damn self, which is that's, poor folks, that's what oppressed I'm folks. No, see, that's not going to work, Doug. It is going to work. Poor folks that are not black going to look at their white people that's giving them jobs and using them as those no. killers, mm -hmm. the Klan and others, they don't want to associate with black folks. Well, see, here's shows the thing that. Now. I'll say this. Now, based on our commercial, the black, the brown, the dark brown commercial that I have to watch too, that I'm watching us out here rapping and killing each other, and then we want to sit here and say that that music ain't affecting our children. Our movies don't affect our children. Now, that I understand. Who would want to help them? Who would want to help um, the boy who cried wolf? Now, tell me. You out here crying wolf, but you ain't said nothing about how we out here acting. How the women out here are half naked. How the men won't pull their pants up and be respectable fathers. Now, now you really want to talk. Let's talk about how long did it take you? To do what? To be a good dad. Well, it took a while. It took a while. So again, that's the chastisement I got to bring to you. Just like you know it took you a while to be a good dad, that's what you got to do to these young folks out here. Don't tell them how you're doing your best. You, you, The government is oppressing you. Tell them what you did. I tell did. them how you did. Well, you don't know much about me, but no, I don't, but I'm talking I don't about what, tell people. Tell them what you did. I don't tell people so about. Can, so you can tell them the truth. Happen to me too often. You have to tell. That's your story. That is your. That is that's your testimony. What you went through, and how you overcame it. See, when you told me I was doing this and that, and I was a bad dad, and then you you they came to you, and woke you up. And, and you changed. Well, that, that's but, true. But guess what changed you? What was that? It wasn't no flowers and candy. It wasn't. It was some embarrassment, wasn't it? Well, it was the court system. Well, that and embarrassment, too. <laughs> well, I must admit there was a little embarrassment So, there. So nobody's changing. If I say, hey, Dr. Henderson, you're doing such a great job. Look at you. You're being oppressed. I still don't the, know. The light-skinned people are oppressing you. So you're going to keep on thinking, they're oppressing me. I'm not sorry. No. That ain't how, that's not how it's working. See, what we need to do is, uh, you said address our people, right? The dark skin. Then address them the right way. Okay, well. Tell them to get their shit together. But, but I, still, I still want to know, with this concept of Dr. Martin Luther King and some of his folks, by this nonviolence, yeah, did that help black folks, or did they lose a lot because of that? I'll say this. At the time when it took place, it was a learning experience. It was it was a opportunity for us to see who's with us, who's against us. I'll say this. My mom marched with Dr. King. And I asked her, you know, how old were you? She was like, I'm 11, 12 years old marching. And I'm like, well, where's granddad and grandma? They at home, she said. She said the 40-year-old people around the 35, 40-year-old range had jobs, they didn't want to lose them, they didn't want to cause no problems, they didn't want to create no stress. So she was she was telling me that although they wanted more and better, they didn't want to ripple the water. So grandma and granddaddy was at home and the kids were marching. Well, I knew a lot of people like that and she, she is exactly right. Folks that were making very small wages, very hard to get a job, you had to toughest job in the community. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about black folks. Right. And that was something that they needed to feed that young person. Mm -hmm. And they had to be non-violence, non-concern in public. They had to smile and grin when they met their opponents, the human enemies of mankind, and talk about it in private among themselves yeah. and hope somebody would come out there and do something about it. Now, and I, that's why they didn't support Dr. King and his folks, because they were afraid. And that causes a lot of problems. And fear is the main thing that keeps us from doing anything. you scared of these folks. you scared of their money. you scared of your cousin who's the police. 
You scared of your cousin who's in the military. You scared of your damn family members. And that's why Project Humanity is trying to spread a message to tell those same people, look, police, a part of my plan is to get you guys a raise. Military, same thing. Why aren't you helping to rebuild our communities as they go into other countries and do it? Look, man. So, so why, aren't, why aren't we recruiting? Like you always say, organize, don't criticize. I'm trying to organize. I'm trying to organize God's people to get up off of their ass and get out here and fight. Now, when we get out here and fight, God goes before us. I don't and your you, enemy Williams. will flee. No, that's not. Yes, they will. Not, I not, see not, them fleeing all the time. Let me tell you, there are more people that honor and think they are blessed by the devil than God. I done told you that done in part one. I know that, but that don't have anything to do with God's power. You can have a million of them damn demons, Doc. Means nothing. Means nothing. I'm not scared of no demons. Well, I'm I'm concerned about uh Set them on fire. The present. The present. We'll set them on fire. During my time in the next two or three hundred years, not waiting for five hundred years to a thousand years to look at this false equity that you're talking about. That's so, what we gotta fight. So right I'm gonna now. get back to this question. Did nonviolence help or hurt black people in America and the world? <clears throat> I'm going to say... Yes or no? The way it was done, no. Now, I do like one of the um, approaches Dr. King took to nonviolence, and I think that's the one that we should... Like I said, it was a learning experience. There's a lot of things they did that didn't work well, and then there's this one thing that worked very well. What was that? And that's them boycotts, them strikes. Well, I see, can agree with that. Now, see, that's the Project Humanity study, is when there's some wrong happening, take their money from them. That's their power. See, God is our power. Money is theirs. So take that money from them. So when we decide, the, 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 the people who have been held down, whether you're light skin or dark skin, you know you being held down. Why don't you decide, hey, we're going to organize without criticizing. We're going to get together as a group of oppressed people, and we're going to plan a strike. And that strike is going to last until those sorry politicians get the message that they are out of here. When we vote in November, they out of here. All of them. If you are incumbent and you would, well, we ain't, you out of here, look, Republican look, and Democrat. Me, let me tell you, see so that? that's to organize. Don't criticize. Let me tell you, sir, you don't even understand that error. You weren't even born during that time. Black folks didn't vote. They no, I'm talking about right now when you have an opportunity to do it. I, mm -hmm. I can't go in the past and change nothing. Nothing I can do about it. We can sit here and talk about it all day and waste a lot of time. Or we can take what we learned from the past, the problems, throw them away. The solutions, bring them forward. Well, see, they have, there were a lot of solutions during the uh, civil rights era, but uh, Dr. King and his folks didn't want to... Uh, adhere to those solutions. There were a lot of different groups that were promoting all kinds of things. And <laughs> most people during that period, in the late 40s and mm -hmm. 50s and 60s especially, didn't believe that integration could be an asset. Because <coughs> me, most black people during that early period, in the mm -hmm. early 60s, in the 40s and so forth, had their economic independence to the point where there was a rising class of black business people. Right. Every city, every town had right. some black business people that owned banks, some health clinics, right. others had movie theaters, right. housing, apartments, right. all kinds of things. Had clinics, homes. Of right. course. But all that was changed during integration when Dr. King and his people fought against self determination. Now, I've, I've heard that a, a lot, and um, and I get it. I do. I see the the both. I see both sides of that. We were at one time a a community working within the community and building, and integration started to separate us. It took 
um, the black restaurants, brown restaurants that were once thriving, and now we get to go over here and eat. So now the the dark skinned brown people, we suffering over here in our community. I see, I see that. Now, my thing is, we know it took place. We know we did it. Let's fix it. I don't want to stay in the past. I don't want to keep talking about how we messed up. Let's address it, but then let's talk about how we go forward. How well, we need to go forward well, is. That's what this how, show is about. And, 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 and again, they're right. And this, that's what the show is about. So now let's think about this. If I have a business over here, let's just call it the, this side of the tracks, and I have a good business. Um, the people over here on this side of the tracks love it. What would make my business grow if I'm already loved over here? It would be to expand to the other side of the tracks, have some customers come from there and bring those dollars here, and that works vice versa. So we're only so big as our community. It's not until we reach out into other communities and shake some hands do we start to expand. Apple doesn't sell phones to just light-skinned people. They sell them to the world. They don't just sell Nikes to, to dark-skinned people. They sell them to the world. See, our, in my opinion, our main issue is we're so focused on us that we forget about the world. I told you earlier, Mr. William, you have to think about yourself first. I, your didn't, family say, I didn't say you don't. I said so focused, Doc. I'm so focused on me, I forgot I had a wife. I'm so focused on me, I forgot I had kids. And that's why you lost her. No, th see, I wasn't even talking about me uh, at I'm the time. I'm talking about you. I, I wasn't I talking you. about me. I I know your, that is not what I was... I know your this business, is, sir. This is not the show for my mental health. That's Saturday. But okay. I... <laughs> hey. Now, let's look at but this But you thing. know something, though? That, that right. was low down. Well, that was low down what you just did. Well, I'm that sorry was, about that. that. I will apologize publicly. Yeah, that was Sometimes down. I will get off... <laughs> Off the right, on the wrong channel. Well, you know, I did hit you with the um, bad daddy. Well, so that, that's, you that's, you that's, all, bad. That, that's <laughs> all right. But look, let's look at this thing. Now, during that period, you know, I was a young man. You know, yes, those sir. days been gone right. in the early 1960s. I had a job, mm -hmm. no pay, working with the NAACP when right. I was a college student. Yeah, tell me about that. And you something happened to me. You told me you worked with the NAACP. Tell me more about that's that. Right. I was a boy. Was young, that here? Yeah, in Jackson, Mississippi. Okay. I was a boy from the plantation down there in Bolton, Mississippi. Mm. And I got a chance to uh, enroll at Jackson State. You know, during that time, if you had a high school diploma, didn't fall dead or commit suicide, if you, you could go to college somewhere, okay. some black college somewhere. And I hate to admit it, uh, they probably felt sorry for me and gave me a chance to enroll. Hey. And being a plantation man, young man, I wanted to do something that I thought was significant. And one day I saw a little sign on the wall. It says, we're forming a student NAACP group on campus. Okay. And I went in and sat around and listened. And during that time, a lot of young people did not know very much about the NAACP mm -hmm. and they started getting officers and I wanted to be president I didn't know nothing about parliamentary procedure but didn't nobody want to be vice president and they selected me to be mm -hmm. vice president so that was kind of like Dr. King got selected to be the exactly leader. right did, the did anybody want to be the vice president did you president? want to take any calls today well yeah I'd be glad to take some calls since I want to call so, so but let me finish this true story <coughs> so when I, I got that job man I felt important a few months later mm. uh, Jesse Jackson Martin Luther King and some of the others wanted to have a big demonstration here in Jackson Mississippi really and being vice president we supposed to go across the street to the Masonic Temple and let uh, Mr. Evers, Mr. Mega Evers, talk to us about it. He was the NAACP, uh, I, I think they might call him the state director at the time. And he was a very important man, very smart, and he was fearless. Yeah. And we had to decide whether or not we were going to go through some training to learn how to be beat by the police in Jackson, the sheriffs and others. <coughs> Wait a minute. And I didn't 
go he along said, with that as said, a student. He said, go through some training. That's right. To learn how to get beat. That's right. They wanted us to practice in one of the buildings on what I call an assimilation, mm -hmm. where you are beat by the police, fire hose by the fire department, charged by the horses and the dogs. And you're supposed to curl up and protect yourself. Mm. And if you didn't get disabled, you were supposed to get up and continue to march or sit down if you're in a sit-in situation when they knock you down with some poor coffee on you, you're supposed to get up yeah, see, now, and, and continue sitting, <clears throat> being yeah. abused. Yeah, see, that's why I disagree with nonviolence. Right there. Well, that's why I lost my job <laughs> because I disagreed with it. And being an old farmer, yeah. being from that plantation as a farmer, I learned if you want to have some time off and not have a lot of trouble, you have to disable the horse, the dogs, mm -hmm. and the water hose. Mm. And that's what I was trying to tell those folks. Say, now, if for some reason when you were attacked by the police, yeah. you need to learn, and I told them the strategy to use, mm -hmm. you need to learn how to disable the horses, yeah. disable the dogs, yeah. and disable the fire hose. Yeah. And that'll put the police <clears throat> down on your level. And since bullies are always cowards, mm -hmm. you'll be treated better. They'll leave you alone, mm -hmm. and then you can go on and get back to your business and create some plans that's going to get you some peace. So you, since I didn't go along with that, they took my job, and mm -hmm. I've been mad about it ever since. Well, just for future reference, if you need to disable some horses or some dogs, handful of cayenne pepper. Done. We had other means, <laughs> but I'm not going to discuss that. But that could have... Well, I'm talking about a non I understand. Don't hurt the dog and the horse. I didn't say anything about you know, hurting the dogs, the I'm horses, and the fire I'm talking about disabling them. I say disabled. Right. And that could have been done within minutes of any attack that we were to endure. This would have handed cayenne they, pepper. They didn't want to do it. Hmm. They told me that is not a way to go. That's being violent. And they took my job. So you got fired from the NAACP. And weren't even getting paid. From the NAACP. That's right. Hmm. Now. That's the first. But that's the true story. Yeah. And I know from experience that when you're in a war, if you see where the enemy is, look at his resources, and sabotage those resources that mm -hmm. he is using against you. I like that. By almost any means necessary. And you don't even have to attack him. You, you know you really say in my plan. You will then have peace and equity and harmony and respect as a person, as a group. You know that's then, the plan, is to disable what they're using against us, our families. But Mr. Williams, you talking about 500 to 1,000 years. No, no, you talking about 500 to 1,000 years. That's what you doing. I'm not talking about 500,000 years. We have the internet today. And see, the way the internet works is we can get this message just like right now in 146 countries. We around the world. The message can spread. It doesn't have to take a hundred, a thousand years to do anything anymore. We're not living in the land of Jesus name anymore. Well, with, I understand With donkeys that. and sending pigeons to, to send a message to somebody. I can call you, text you. We can organize and don't criticize from our cell phones. But sir, you have a lot of work to do. We can organize on your show. On your show, we can put the word out now that we're organizing. Well, we're that not, we let are me tell going you something to do clearly. something about this. Since I don't want to wait 500 to 1,000 years, you might do this, but you have to do it on your own show. You're not going <laughs> to do that on my show. I believe in immediate results by putting this plans together, having an agenda that will get results in 30, 60, 90 days. That's what I'm trying to tell you right now. You just don't want to hear it. You keep saying it's it's 500 years. What what about God business takes 500 years? I know Noah took a long time to build a boat. I get that. I got that part. This is not that time. This is not. We didn't. This is a new day and age where technology changed everything. We can organize right now. 
We have an election coming up. Everybody's excited about it. Everybody's looking at both sides. It's crazy. Both sides are looking at both of the the head, the leaders in the in the uh, race right now, as hopeless choices. But for some strange reason, the RNC and the DNC, this is what they're giving us. Especially the DNC, they're not even trying to give you an option. So what I'm saying right now, not in 30, 60, and 90 days, let's organize these people to fight for their children's future. See, their children is worth it. See, it's worth fighting for knowing that in 1999 in Jackson, Mississippi, I was working making $12 an hour. And now and they're making less. Most the, people that's with, the without standard a right skill. now. Still. That's right. You know, so let's let's wake the hell up, honestly. See, if I was able to make that in 1996 and a car note was 350, rent was 350, 400. And we are not going to do anything now be, with these politicians who we have in power, who we elected. Our children didn't elect them. Well, let me tell you. We this, elected those fools. Let me halt you we, right now. We kept those we, fools in office. We are not doing anything. Only, we need only to do, about 25 to 30% of the black folks vote. Again, even if they in not the vote, areas where they're in the majority. I mean, we still did it because we didn't get up and vote. We still did it. That's what you need to be talking so, about. Then. So what I'm saying is, you're, you, we still responsible. And once we step one, hold ourselves accountable. What do you say? That? Step one is admit we got a problem. Admit that we have a problem, and then what's step two? Now tell me this then. <laughs> Trust that God can help us with our problem, and then three, we turn it over to God. So now. Step one, we got a problem. We know that. Step two, we ask God to help us with it. And then when God provides us that help, we we'll ask God to help us. We're going to trust God to help us. Mr. Williams, I don't know where you've been brainwashed that. Black folks have been taught that old dead. No, y'all have been taught years. Jesus, not that's God. See, that's where I'm going to disagree, and I'm sorry to cut you off. See, y'all been taught wrong. See, Jesus himself said... Follow these laws. Anybody who teaches you to do different will be considered the least in heaven. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said that. Jesus never told you to disregard the laws. You under grace. That was a prophet who told you that. I mean, an apostle, which is speaking the gossip, not the gospel. Jesus didn't tell you to disobey God's laws I know and that did. my blood will wash away your sin. Jesus didn't say that. Mr. Williams, you got to understand... Y'all need to get the, it together. The Bible is a man-made written document. It is a book and teaching the, you spiritual law. And the Ten Commandments and other commandments have never been addressed or adhered to by mankind anywhere in the world in, a major, in, in a major manner. And that's the problem. It's just you. It there are very you. few people that practice the commandments of God and why and is they, that? Because they don't want to wait forever to get their reward. You don't have to wait. That's the thing, though. Your preacher's teaching you wrong. You don't wait forever to get your reward. Well, I, I can God agree with that. God rewards you constantly for being good, doing God's work. God constantly reward for, for obeying the laws. See, what we've been learning growing up is that Jesus washed away your sins. No, repentance washes away your sins. Not Jesus. Repentance. Jesus didn't tell you, I got you. Then what else you have to do once you repent? You repent, you change, you do better. And guess what? You start to tell other people that same thing about how you fail, you got up. And guess what God does? Hey, I like the way you're doing that. Let me give you here's some more money so you can keep it going. I like what you're doing. You Oh, you giving? You giving because that's a law, give and receive. Wait a minute, you a giver? Well, hey, let me give you some more so you can keep giving. Well, so, where, where is this happening at that's, in the that's, world, that's, Mr. Williams? Well, see, here's the problem. Some people know these laws. It's like gravity. It doesn't change if I'm a good person or a bad person. Gravity doesn't know if I'm good or bad. It's going to work. 
the law of give and receive doesn't know if I'm an evil person or a good person. It just knows it works. So when we have all these people, and this is a big problem in our community, when they come around and say, hey, let's get a donation to the hungry kids. Let's give a donation to the elderly. Let's give a donation to these veterans. We don't want to give no money. I ain't donating all that. They just going to throw it away and use it for something else. And guess what? It don't have nothing to do with what they going to do with the money. It's about you giving. Good feeling giving. It's like God loves a grateful giver and also a grateful receiver. I didn't know that. I didn't know grateful receiving was a law. See, I was the person who was like, here, here, give, give. And then when somebody tried to give me something, oh, no, I'm good. I don't want that. I don't want Mr. it. Williams, and guess it what I found out? It doesn't work that out? way, sir. It doesn't yes, work that way. Yes, it does. When I found you. out that if you stop being a grateful receiver, you cut off the receiving. You cut it off. It's like you stop receiving the gifts from God because you you don't you think that person poor or you think that person shouldn't. You got enough. You blocking your giving. I didn't know that was a law until I started studying the laws, and I started looking at myself, and I was like, "Wow, I have done. I, I've I've been doing so wrong." And when I said, "God, forgive me," I'm gonna do better, and I started doing better. My life changed. Well, let me tell you something that is is very factual. Those same people that you mentioned, the poor, the homeless, and all of those, their situation will change. If the people that have the ability to promote that change would create programs mm -hmm. that's going to give them an opportunity to improve their mental health, eliminate housing, you can't di eliminate discrimination, have skills that's developing training in short periods of time, three, four, and five months, yeah, and things of that nature, and practicing what I call positive family structures and things of that nature will change our situation within a matter of months. I agree with you. And there was something you had on here, on your, on your, your, your paperwork, your outline, that I wanted to talk about. <clears throat> the public schools closing. That's the, that's the number one. And, and <clears throat> back to what you're saying, we got to have those people who have some resources start to invest in the areas where they need them the most. And that's why I, I, I'll say this. <clears throat> we always want to demonize rich people. Oh, the 1%, they holding you down. Not all of them are bad people. Let's just be clear. Some of them are good people. They're just doing their thing. You know, they do what they do. They don't know how to work in the community. So they need community people to reach out to them with ideas. Like you have plans. I have plans. And we have to make those plans known. So shows like this allow us to do that. So when we're talking about this public schools closing, right? That's one this, of the issues. That's I heard it's 16 issue. of them. Now, I'm not going to say it's an issue. I'm going to say it's an opportunity. And here's why. A part of my plan that I didn't detail in the, the five pages, I left this one out. But it's to take these abandoned buildings these, these community centers that we have, and let's re, restructure them. And repurpose them. Repurpose them. Of course. Them. We have um, painters. We have uh, brick masons. We got concrete people. We got barbers. We got all these people, chefs. We can take these and turn them into training facilities, sheetrock, roofing, so that we can start rebuilding our community with our people. And those people who invest, see, that's where the money comes from. Those, those people who have those billions of dollars, those people who have those hundreds of millions, can invest in these projects. Tax write-off, as a matter of fact. And see, as long as we're positive and doing God's work, just like you said, it won't take 500 to 1,000 years. This is something we can get done well, if really fast. Listen to the fact. See, a lot of you all have your head in the sand and you don't want to listen to the facts or you don't know the facts. The, uh, the, the uh, codification, the legal structure for public schools really don't have it set where the public schools can automatically be repurposed 
and turn into something else without legislative change. That's why we usually, firing everybody usually, this November. We're firing everybody this November. And see, that's the thing. All that damn paperwork is getting in our way. And who is the problem? The legislatures. Those people who we who we voted for. So we vote their asses out, and the people going in know the agenda. The agenda is to get rid of the red tape, to get rid of the, the bull that's keeping us from doing anything. I agree with you. There's a lot of paperwork. But if we get rid of these people, that paperwork goes away too. Well, Mr. Williams, you can't do that automatically. Yes, we can. In November, we can do it. No, you can't do it in November. You we can get rid of everybody in it November. It can't, can't be done because you don't have the people in, in place to do it. You first, no, we, we, we're in place right here. You, you, we organize You first have to get new leaders. You recruit them. Mm -hmm. You select them. You train them. And then you place them. Well, why would but, we want to do all of that when we can let God do it? See, here's the thing. Just like you didn't... You didn't find me. You didn't you didn't come find me and train me. We just happened to miraculously be in each other's presence. So why don't we use God power instead of our limited abilities and start to say if we put this out here into the world, if we let the world know that this is what we're trying to do, trust that God will make it happen. Well, I want you to go and do that we on, do your, it. On, on your on own, my show. <laughs> on your own show, because uh, like I told you, I don't. I like it on your show, though. No, you're not going to do it. Much I like on it on my your show. show. Now, the thing that I you want get you get more to, views than I do. I want you to look at look at this. Now, we we have this uh, deal here, yes, sir. where you are promoting all this God's love yeah. and so forth. Why we don't have it on the international arena? We do. There's so much his hostility going on in the world today, mm. and I mentioned this uh, concept some time ago. I'm talking about World War III Part One and yeah. Two. We have 14 to 15 different nations now that's fighting each other in the Middle East, yes, sir, in Africa and other areas, and the United States, Russia, the Chinese, the Israelis, and many others in the Middle East, the Lebanese. Iranians and others are fighting. Right. It's regional now, but it's going to be international by the end of the year. I can see that happening if we don't do something soon. I'm not going to just go along with it because I do believe we can change. However, it's going to take a lot of good people getting up saying something. See, I agree with him. There's a lot of bad people out here. And their voice is magnified. Why? Well, because it's only seven media companies. Well, eight. We won. So you have limited access to information. So if I'm controlling what you see, controlling what you hear, controlling who you vote for, controlling everything mentally, about you, then how can you fight back if nobody else is doing anything different than that narrative? So it's up to us to change that narrative. For us to say, we're not a part of the seven networks. We're not going to give you those same drama, drama, drama. I'm going to tell you that there's candidates running against Joe Biden. Marianne Williamson is one of them. I like her. The other guy, Dean, I think it's Phillips, he's running also. Cornell West is running, but he's in the, uh, he's doing independent. It's a couple of people challenging Joe Biden. Kennedy is challenging him. So we got people challenging him. However, our dark-skinned people always vote Democrat, See the and it's always a problem. Well, I can understand that. Like, what have they done that affected you? Who, the Democrats? the Democrats? They have maintained the status quo. <laughs> they have always fought against issues for black folks when it have comes to Have they really equity. fought against them or have they locked us up in jail during the damn crack well, wars? That's, me, exact, that's exactly so, so, how you fight against the interests of black folks. Oh, you said they fought against our interests. That's right, the Democrats. Oh, my bad. I, heard, the, the I Democrats. thought you said they fought for our and interests. And then you mentioned talking about who might run against uh Biden. Uh, Joe Biden, right. hell, those folks you mentioned couldn't get 10 votes. No, the person, see, the see, person, see, listen see. to me, let me finish. 
the person that you ought to be concerned about is the Republican nominee who is probably going to be the former president. Mm -hmm. He is leading in the polls and he's not even debating his peers in the Democrat in the Republican Party. He's not. So he is in a position to mm -hmm. cause some significant changes in the world yeah. which would be good for people because there's going to be so much chaos mm -hmm. and when you have chaos you're going to have disorder and then you're going to come in and fix it. Now, That's the way I it can happen during a lifetime. I can't argue with that. I cannot argue with that. That is true. We may need a whooping in order to get it together. So the threat of Joe Biden winning, um, I mean, the threat of Trump winning and creating a problem, not a problem for me. <clears throat> I don't have a problem with that because being forced to deal with Joe Biden and the carrying on as business as usual. And, and they love to forget that the housing problem happened during his watch. They, they don't want to talk about what ha Women lost their rights during his watch. You can blame the Republicans all you want to. But if you driving the bus and you wreck, I mean, sorry, you driving the bus and the bus wrecks, are you going to blame the dude who just gave you the keys? Well, I blame both the Republicans and Democrats for the housing problem and the problems in the black community when it comes to economic development. Uh, you were too young to know that when they had uh, what I call the infrastructure development where they build the national highway uh, system, I know about they it. went through every black major community I know about and they were so racist in many instances they it. went above the black businesses and put those big columns on the streets it. and sabotaged the black businesses. I saw it. I then saw they it. wouldn't allow them to get money to build homes, to build subdivisions. Even the veterans, one or two would ease in and get a, a loan from time to time. Mm -hmm. And that happened up until the 1980s and 90s I when know. veterans could I get know. loans to build homes and do what they supposed I to know. do. It's the terrible. education system mm -hmm. had very limited changes. They mm -hmm. had something called affirmative action mm -hmm. and that only took care of two or three yep. percent of the black folks that needed education. Right. They still taught miseducation in the black high schools, elementary now, schools, colleges and universities. How, how are they teaching miseducation in the black university? Because That's, the people that we, have we control there. of legislation determines what is taught in these schools and they generate the funds in an unlimited manner, an unequal manner, where you can't even do anything if you're bold enough to change the curriculum because mm. you want to keep your job. So where, so is there a reason to have a separate school if we still gonna have to teach the same thing that they teach? No, them? we need to have a variety of schools. We need public schools, private schools, schools where you get vouchers from the state to send your child to the school mm -hmm. the best, we need uh, religious schools, yeah. and now, that money should be distributed according to the person that's going to school, maybe ten or twelve, thirteen thousand dollars per child, and he or she can go into where the parents want him to go. So let me ask you something. Then. So what do you think about the European standard for school? Because it's not a standard that I think even made it across the water. I think it was generated and created over here, just like they said they started forcing people into schools. They started getting the native kids and putting them into schools. See, for me, this all is brainwashing and indoctrination to me. So when we're talking about schools and education, we're really just talking about how much of the European standard did we learn? Are we not? Because that's what we're respecting. I got my degree came, oh, I, I'm tracking it. It's coming from Europe before you get your you get your PhD. It's coming from Europe. Like that means something to me. Now, are you talking about those uh, so-called Native Americans that were no, I'm talking sabotaged about, and went to those white colleges? You know, they and, had to take them there. Schools that was the beginnings. During, yeah, during the uh, 1880s. Right. That was the beginnings of the the indoctrination, the making you not you, not better use, not love you more, but to love that way more. 
So, like we were talking during the break um, about how we both had family members who were a lot lighter than us who were able to go and, and, and we'll say they integrated into another lifestyle so far until they didn't even know that we were family anymore. Well, let me tell you something what you all don't seem to understand. Uh, you all talking about the European culture as the greatest culture in Who the said world. That? Some of you future, no. futurists, no. and you're talking about how they took those Native Americans and put them and in those schools that. and had them to cut off their hair. They couldn't even speak the languages. Right. They That's lost they their did. culture. They took them as kids, four and five years of age, and kept them for years. When they went home, they couldn't even understand their parents' language. Right. And I don't. I bet you couldn't find. 5,000 Native Americans that attended those schools that's normal today and feel that they are real human beings. No, you can't, probably. Um, a lot of them, I think, integrated. Like, I saw a few clips of um, Native Americans discussing how they were forgotten up north, and they were really light-skinned Native Americans so they weren't they weren't the darker ones that I'm used to seeing down here in the South, and so they just blended in. Because if you think about it honestly, and I can't blame a person for wanting a better life. So me being this dark, I don't get to blend in. I got to deal with it as I deal with it. But if you're really really light skinned and you can pass, I I can see why they did. That. Look sir, let me tell you, the real history about these so-called white Native Americans is nothing but a scam. Same they had right. something called the DAWES, D-A-W-E-S, laws, mm -hmm. and you have, and you can read this in the history books, you won't find it too much. Was it the, typed? It was typed, but the thing is, you didn't find it in the public school books, mm -hmm. and they had something called the DAWES Act, and any white person that could find five dollars could go and enroll himself in certain parts of the country as a Native American so they can get that land. Wow. And the real Indians were taken from the land and moved to other parts of the United States, to the mm -hmm. worst parts they could find, mm -hmm. and they then said, this is your new home. Right. Now, we are going to take care of you. We're going to give you food, clothing, shelter, Mm -hmm. and education. Until we need it back. And that's exactly what happened, and they're doing the same thing mm -hmm. in the Middle East, and that's why you have this war going on now right. with the Palestinian and the Israelis. <clears throat> they are saying the same thing to the Palestinians. So when are we, good people, going to quit just talking about this? See, organized don't criticize. We know they're doing it. They do the same thing. It's a, it's a propaganda war. They separate us with fears, and then they demonize a group of people, and then they take those folks' land. But so if, if that's what we know they do every time, the they're going to be some changes in the situation. We got a call. Yeah, we got a call, but in, in, in less than two years, that situation in the Middle East is going to change because they're going to get some respect when there's what I call equitable retaliation from all sides. And that's the problem is when it gets to the point where we're not talking, now we, we have to fight. I guess that's when we get to the part where you were talking about is we have to have that whooping before we change. No, it's always good to have a good fight if you want some positive changes. Now, if we have a call, a call, what is your question? We Go ahead, call, please. I heard it ringing. We got a call at Chelsea? They hung up. Call back, call well, Call, we want, call we want to back hear you. in if you can, please. 1 800 492 5186. If you want to talk to Dr. Henderson or myself, please give us a call. We believe digital networks. 1 800 492 5186. Now, let's look at this, Mr. Williams. Yes, sir. Now, since you believe in this futurist idea, now with the war going on in the Middle East right now, mm, tough one. there are Hold up, man. There are two sides. Listen, right now, the Europeans versus <laughs> the Middle Easterners. Yeah. Now, should then, since a lot of them think like you, you think, 
should mm. the Americans then agree <laughs> to volunteer and go and participate man, in that war? Man, no way in the world should we send a, a dollar or a person over there. First off, no. I say volunteer. Not a one. Going on right there. Okay, go on, go ahead, please. You have a question? Well, it's ringing. My thing is, Doc, no. No way. Caller, we got a caller? Yes, sir. How you doing today, caller? How can we help you? Doing well. I'd love for you all to talk about uh, the governor joining the uh, other 14 states. It was 15 states. Republican governors uh, rejected the money to feed the hungry children. Mm. Did y'all see that on the news recently? Most certainly did, yes. I missed it. Okay, they, 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 so the Mississippi governor, our governor, uh, joined the other 14 other states to refuse the money uh, to feed underprivileged children. All right? But Dr. Henderson, uh, you know, he accepted the money uh, for broadband. So both pots of money is coming from the Biden administration. I love to get your thoughts and your comments on that. And who is the money going to benefit uh, in the state of Mississippi that that he uh, made a decision to accept and set an office up? in his office and name Miss Sally Doty over the millions of dollars that's coming to Mississippi. I'll hang up and listen to you coming. Okay, you have two questions. What's going to happen about uh, feeding the poor people in America mm -hmm. and what's going to happen to the broadband money? Mm -hmm. They're going to distribute this money for broadband to currently organized telecommunication companies. They're going to go in certain neighborhoods where they have more affluence and put broadband at every house, they are then going to go to the poor communities in the state of Mississippi and other states and hit the surface for broadband in those poor communities. The idea is to keep everyone unequal and have them in a position where they have lack of information and that's why the 14 governors decided we are not going to feed poor folks black or white and give them a position where they can have food, clothing, shelter, have good clear minds, can go to school and be competitive. That is not what they do. It is a racist move. Is it racist? It is a racist said, move, of course. They're going to keep the blacks and the white folks hungry. Well, they don't care. Not white folks don't care nothing about the poor whites. So is that they racist? use them only to suppress black folks? That's what I mean. They put them into positions to contain black folks, That's and white I mean. folks are saying, "I will not be considered black regardless. I don't mind being I poor as long as I can support myself by keeping a black person down." And these top leaders in America <clears throat> know that. Yeah. So they have their handymen. So why don't we organize with them? No, you don't do that. Yes, you do. See, my cousins. That's my been cousins, tried. It's been tried. It's finished. See, this younger generation. See, we need you, you older guys, you, 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 you elders, to be the foundation full of knowledge. We will support you financially with the muscles and the going in and cussings and the voting. But we need to make the future for those children. Those children, they will go out here and fight for that equality we're talking about. See, they don't believe what we believe, or I mean, what y'all believe about the division. They don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. Why, so because, this, see, you've been brainwashed. So, no, see, this is a good time that. for unity, see. This is a good time. See, we just need to focus, just like you just you just said. The governor's not accepting the money to feed the poor blacks, dark skinned or light skinned folks. I did say that. So and that's the fact. So the rich are again attacking the poor. Hello? We got a caller, don't know. Do we have another caller? Go ahead, please. Hello, I've I've been checking out your show. I've, I've 
kind of missed it on YouTube. It's not on YouTube, so I'm watching it on Facebook. Love the conversation, guys, but I have a question for both of you all. Yes, sir, go ahead. Uh, with Dr. Henderson. Yes. Uh, would pull your resources sources and train your leaders in order for us to together and to make things happen within our own communities. I get that. But at the same time, are we going to put ourselves in those positions to still have to ask for permission to do what we need to do? No, you will not. If you pool your resources collectively and train your own leaders and get them in positions of responsibility in three to five or seven, eight years where they have the decision-making power and ability to determine where funds are going to be spent and what programs is going to be financed, things could start changing in seven to 14 years right here in Mississippi and in the nation. It doesn't take long to get a person ready for a position in politics if he is 17 years of age today, in five years, he would be in a position where he could run for Congress, he could be a sheriff, he could be a member of the city council, and on and on. And these people can be trained. They have them in high schools. They have them in the colleges. And they can be organized, recruited, and trained and put in these positions. But you have to get people registered to vote for us. You cannot depend on the current voters to make any significant changes other than keeping the people in they have currently. The same politicians, elected and appointed. The same out. preachers. The same corporate leaders. Okay. Get them out. Exactly. That, 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 that was going to be the second part of my question to you, Dr. Anderson, because we here in Jackson, Mississippi, has basically had the same people that look like us in government for right about 30 years now, and we've watched a significant decline. Do you think there's a lack of trainers and lack of uh, leadership on that part? Well, both. They, they, they have the training, but are not enough training to learn how to compromise and negotiate with the people that control the money. Uh, for instance, they are so brainwashed being Democrats, a lot of these Democrats don't want to talk to the Republicans. You go and talk to the people that have the money and work out some kind of deal. Right. And in the area where you're in the majority, you have to let those folks know that I have to have some of this tax money because we have certain problems that we want to address and correct. And of course, since oh. they don't believe that you can solve your problems because your leadership is so poor and they structure it where you don't have the resources, they say, I will give you some money, but you are not going to be able to spend it. I will send someone to spend it for you, and that's not going to help you at all. All they're doing then is re the area, and when you know anything, you have new judges, new police forces, you have new businesses, new tenants in your old area where you used to live, and your butt is gone somewhere to a relocate, uh, relocation camp or somewhere in a ghetto, uh, rural, or city. And then as I'm the process is moving, young man, you're going to find that you're going to be more and more kicked out, and that's where destruction is going to happen. Okay, well, that, that, that goes cold inside with Mr. Williams' explanation about humanity. When you've been brainwashed, you know, it's to a certain point in my life growing up, being brainwashed to where your parents and and your community pushed into your head to, hey, vote Democrat, vote Democrat, vote Democrat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, growing up, as I saw in the bill, and a man myself, is that I come to realize that the Democratic Party has actually came up with a scheme to hinder our people about giving us a whole lot of stuff without teaching us how to earn it. And just say, here, here you go. Here you can have nickels and pennies and dimes, oh. EBT cards, and all of this to say that we're taking care of you so you like us more to vote for us. And now I go to the humanity part, Mr. Williams. On the spiritual
worship realm of being God. Do you think God would agree with that? Agree with what? The way the Democratic Party to do oh. to the way that the, the Democratic Party has done us. Now I'm a I'm gonna say no because it is in my learned uh, what I've learned is we teach a man how to fish, and then he goes fishing, not give him some fish because he's just gonna eat for today. So what I'm looking at, and and I'm glad that's a real good topic. You you reminded me of something. Um, they were talking about the child tax credit they were giving to um, to the kids, three fifty a piece. When I heard that, I was like, so y'all gonna give three hundred fifty dollars to each kid? You 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 remember when they gave um, welfare to single mothers, to, but you had to have a daddy at the house. This is that same right. thing again, and they're not saying it like it is, but it is. Because if you have one or two or three kids, that check is coming to mama. And guess what they finna start doing? Having more kids, and guess what? It's still gonna be fatherless homes, fatherless homes. Because if you don't think for that those people will start having babies for that 350 a month, you crazy. And that's, that was another game that they playing with people is because the population is shrinking. Your generation, Dr. Henderson, the baby boomers, or the um, the right after baby boomers, you guys, y'all are about to attack Social Security. And so that age, y'all hard workers, we finna lose a hard working group of society. Now let me tell you, Mr. William and Caller. So they trying to get more that, kids. That, that $350 that you all are talking about, that Mr. William's talking about, uh, could have been legislated to be used for the children it should have been. and look at the situation of the individual child and say you can get this $350 but your child is going to have to improve his performance in school he's going to have to be put in smaller classes he or she will have to get tutors he and he or she will have to be taking certain assessments so they can pull up their scores and their grades so they can be competitive with the other kids in the community and in other schools, public and private. And parent, you are going to have to improve your skills. You're going to have to learn the technical or vocational skills where you can make a livable wage because we're not going to give you this money but for so long. These are the ways you have to do it with legislation. You just don't give a person money and no legislation is going to improve them within what I call the custom. All we did was run out of Nikes. That's all they did was buy uh, of course. five words of Nikes. But legislation could have been generated to change that. But it's not going to happen because that keep people happy. And then you have fewer voters, less education. And crab legs. And more, more women will have, just as Mr. Williams said, their direct independence from the males and having more children. And then the men like Mr. Williams won't have the woman they want to marry because they are so confused and hate them so until they have to go elsewhere. Elsewhere. And, and many well, of them are changing their gender because of that. Well, I don't know about that part. Well, I don't know about the changing the Well, exa I, exa but, exactly. Um, from, from, both, from both of you all point of views on that, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Well, but I will have to inject this. Well, thank you. Do you have another question or comment to make with us? Yes. I will have to inject this into this conversation. Okay. Is that how can we pool our resources, train our leaders, and then get those two intact and together and try to negotiate with the same people that 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 whole conversation that you just had, how can we negotiate with those people to demand or to get what we want? Okay, the thing you do, you first pool your resources, start training your own leaders, and you get them in a competitive mode with the other folks, and then the people with the money that want to control, that are controlling everything, will come to you and start telling you how they are going to help you. 
then if you are stupid enough to give them responsibility <laughs> of how the money is going to be spent, say, I will take the money, but you can't tell me how to spend it. You either give it to me to use and promote my programs, or you keep it, and we are going to continue to train ourselves. Now, that's one way to do it. And the other one is to cause confusion by generating foreign support. Community organizations can work with their international agencies through the UN and through the delegates they have in all these big cities like Atlanta and other places and get funds from the nations of the world that will generate money to send their citizens to the state of Mississippi and everywhere else. They can get money for dormitories. They can have all kind of programs. They're doing it right now. The Russians, the Chinese, and the others are doing this. They have free classes. They are working in science and manufacturing, and they are building facilities in these countries and offering these free training, but they are letting the people know that you have to sign contracts to give us the ability to send advisors to teach you how to manufacture your resources. And the leaders that sign these contracts in memorandums of understanding that I like to talk about don't know enough about leadership to say, I can do this, but every time I give you so many, so every time we take so much money for you, you're going to have to train a certain percentage of our people to work in the industries that you want to train us to do, mm -hmm. to take over. Uh, okay, with that being said, what would be the narrative, or uh, what way, uh, I should I rephrase that, what way would you try to sway the resources as far as your teachers, your uh, carpenters, your um, any skilled person. I'm going to let Mr. Wigan handle that. Now, I'm glad you brought up the teachers and their pay because I had a suggestion for that um, actually two days ago. And that is teachers should make the same thing congressmen make. That's what I think. Congressmen, whatever they make, that's what teachers should make. And they're both public servants. They both work for us. But one is actually more important, which is the teacher. So if the teachers make what the congressmen make, then we can start seeing some change. See, who in the world told them that their salary should be $174 a year? $174,000 a year. Who told them that? I didn't give them a raise, did you? They told themselves. They told themselves. And that's why Dr. Henderson, I say, we got to vote themselves up out of there. In November, see, it's things like this that the people don't know. See, the people don't know that Congress gave themselves a raise by not voting against the raise. So it's a, it's a play of words that they do on us. I didn't vote for the raise. But you didn't vote against it either. And you didn't turn it down and when you, it passed. And you didn't turn it down. So if I personally could pick my price, what do you think I'd do? If McDonald's had an opportunity to go and say, hey, we had a great week this week. Why don't we just make $20 an hour? Everybody, $20 an hour. Don't you think they'd do it? Yes, they would. Well, did you vote against it? No, I didn't vote against it. I don't think we should make 20 But I didn't vote against the 20 but we got the 20. I'm not turning it down. That's what, our, that's what our politicians are doing to us and what we're doing. Check, vote again, vote for them again, vote for them again. So we created this problem that our children now have to dig themselves out of. And we damn sure better help them. Because they didn't well, speaking vote for we did. But well, speaking of digging yourself out of something, okay, I heard both of you. You kind of rebut on the question. But remember, teachers, firemen, policemen, back in the day were jobs of passion, right? Mm -hmm. They 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 love to do what they do, whether it be teach, protect, or put out a fire. How can we rekindle the passion for these jobs to take the monetary aspect of it out of it, period? Like Miss Dr. Henderson, when you say pull your resources, and, and Mr. Whedon, when you say humanity-wise, as far as doing God's work, right? Yes, sir. How can we 
the first thing, in my opinion, is how can we rekindle the passion of your job? See, back then, the way it worked, people had passion. Back then, teachers had passion and would go all out the way to teach a kid. Even if they were slower than other kids, they boost them up. Now it's about money. I don't I don't make nothing but thirty thousand dollars down in Mississippi. I can go to Arizona and make sixty thousand well, dollars. That can't, takes I away the passion. Caller, I can't fight with that one because it's hard to have passion when you're hungry. It's hard to have passion when you when you when you can't keep your lights on. It's hard to have passion for teaching when you in there twelve hours and then you spending your money to buy your students books and, and and supplies. It's hard to be passionate as a teacher when the parents aren't parenting at home and they're just expecting the teacher to teach them. It's hard to have passion when we're not doing our job and expecting the teacher to do it as well as, hey, here's this low pay. Let me pay you nothing and treat you bad. How much passion you got well, the remedy to, to that call and Mr. Williams, if you have parents that don't know how to uh, train yeah. their children, which, which you don't, and you have the resources to train the children to enhance their education, usually it's done after school, and all the legislators have to do is demand that the parents, if they are not working, attend classes with their kids in another room and get the skilled enhancements they need so they can be independent and make a livable wage. And that wouldn't cost a lot because they have people with the skills that can do this and change one's life in three to six months. You can get a certification in three to six months. For instance, you're making minimum wage now in Mississippi, $7.35. In less than six months, if you get a certification in technology, you make 18 to $30 an hour with or without a high school diploma. Mm -hmm. Healthcare is another area where you can make a good salary if you get the right education and training and that's without having a RN degree or a BS degree in nursing. All kinds of technologists there that are paid 60, 70, $80,000 a year in the healthcare field. Transportation the same way. Mr. Williams used to be a truck driver. I'm still a truck driver. Still is. And I know you can get in a program now, and in a few weeks, according to the advertisement and some people that I know, a caller just called in, he has that experience. You can make fifty, six to seventy or eighty thousand dollars a year with or without a high school diploma yeah. if you had the will to get in these uh, programs and stay for seven days or two weeks or two months. Now, Dr. Henderson, yes, let's, let's just be honest here. My brother was a truck driver in 1996, and he made 1500 to $2,000 a week, mm -hmm. which, is a, which is more than $50,000 a of year. Of course, of course. And that was in 1996. We... It's strange to me that we still having the same paid discussions that I was having in 96. We were talking about lawyers making $60,000 a year, truck drivers making 80 to 100. That was in 96. How come we still talking about the same thing? Well, because With the same numbers. Well, we have the same people making the same money. There are a lot of lawyers now and, and working. How, and why is that? Because they are not thinking about looking out for their interests. It's because we voted for the wrong people every time and it's time for us to fix it. That's I can, what it was. I can accept that. For since 96, I've been I've been hearing a truck driver making 100,000 a year. Since 96. And they make less than that today at some jobs. Of course. So of course. what we're talking about well, right I now has nothing to do with racism. This is politics, politics, politics. We didn't sold the country by voting for the same people. Oh, I like that last well, night. I, can, that I, last night. I want to iterate. Can I can I iterate in there? Can yes, I can I inject ahead, into that go conversation? Ahead. Go ahead. Um, I, I can remember in the eighties, I had relatives that was making thirty dollars an hour working at uh, Packard Electric, uh, Frito Lay. That's more than they paid Nissan. 
That right. was in so, the 80s. Right. You know, and correct. They pay, make less than that in a similar organization now. They had unions in a lot of those areas and a few areas in the South. But now you don't have the membership as you had in the 80s and 90s. It has decreased, and you have the right-to-work states. And that's where the big companies now are flowing to, to Mississippi, Georgia, Alabama, and places like that. So when you miseducate the people and you tell them that the union is bad, the union is going to take your money. And see, you hear people repeat these things to you, an educated person, and you like, no, the union is good. They help you fight against the company who's trying to put you down. But you, how can you educate the uneducated when TV is their classroom? That's why you have to get them into training institutions if they are not working. So, Dr. Henderson, along know, with their children. I don't know if we took a break yet. No, we you haven't take taken a break. A break. <laughs> call it. We're going to take a break for a few minutes. And we want to thank you for calling. If you need to, I want to call back anytime. So, stay tuned, viewers and listeners. We'll be back after several commercials. Have you had your Earth Blend coffee today? At Earth Blend Coffee, we take pride in offering you the very best of beans across the world, blended and roasted to perfection, giving you superior quality and satisfying and flavorful taste. Experience the world in one cup with Earth Blend Coffee. To order, visit earthblendcoffee.co now. Socrates Garrett ENT.com is a diversified firm specializing in recycled aggregates and crushed concrete. Socrates Garrett ENT.com's recycled materials provide the construction industry with significant economic and environmental benefits by recycling clean concrete rubble into M. grade rock materials. Recycled aggregates and crushed concrete can be applied to driveways, road construction, bank protection, parking lots, general bulk fills, and more. For more information, please call 601 896 0084 or visit us online at Socrates Garrett. Okay, calls uh, and viewers, we want to thank you for listening to the Old Henderson Real News Show. We got excited. We went over time. And I want you to know if you want to hear more information about the Old Henderson Real News Show, Organize, Don't Criticize, you call us at 601-201-1957, or you can dial us at 1-800-492-5186. We'll be glad to talk to you. Visit your area, your school, your church, your community organization, or your family reunion. Just call us, 601-201-1957. Matter of fact, we even go international because we are servicing 139 different nations all over the world and 50-plus states and territories. Thank you for calling, and thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week.